What if I told you that AMD does indeed have a secret GPU that can at times dethrone the RTX 4090? Well, let's talk about it. I don't know about you guys, but I haven't had cereal for a very long time because the good stuff is loaded with sugar, carbs, and lots of calories, making it impossible to eat without gaining weight. Well, that's where Magic Spoon comes in. They're completely changing the game by bringing all the great flavors you remember as a kid in an adult-friendly cereal you can actually eat and not cry about later. With 13 to 14 grams of protein, just four to five grams of carbs, and zero grams of sugar, Magic Spoon is an absolutely great alternative. Seriously guys, this cereal tastes really good and it comes in a bunch of different flavors like cocoa, peanut butter, frosted, which tastes just like a donut to me, and my favorite flavor, fruity, which tastes exactly how I remember. So if you want to eat cereal again without the shame of dumping pounds of sugar into your body, be sure to click the link in the description below, scan the QR code on screen, or go to magicspoon.com slash graphically and use code graphically for $5 off your purchase. I highly recommend it. Okay, so a ton of people, myself included, were very disappointed to see that this time around, AMD didn't seem to be even trying to go after NVIDIA's highest end GPU, the RTX 4090. I mean, when you look at mainstream reviews, the RTX 4090 is head and shoulders above every single other GPU. But as I mentioned in the intro, Actually, AMD does have a GPU which can definitely compete with the RTX 4090 and in some cases can even beat it in fair comparisons. And it's just weird because it seems like nobody wants to talk about this GPU. But this graphics card is absolutely insane. Now, the graphics card I'm going to be talking about today is what I'm unofficially calling the RX 7970 XTX 3GHz edition because it can surpass 3GHz with ease far beyond 3 gigahertz in fact with a little bit of overclocking and it is way way faster than the rx 7900 xtx now the gpu specifically is actually the asrock rx 7900 xtx aqua edition with the ln2 or xoc bios which allows for far far higher power targets and if you know anything about rdna3 as i've mentioned in the past it is very very power limited so this extra massive power increase does allow it to be massively more performant in fact so much so that the rtx 4090 should definitely be scared how much faster is it well if we go ahead and take a look at this chart of apex legends here at 4k you can see that on average this overclocked xtx versus reference clocks which by the way is still on the aqua so maybe it's even a little bit faster than reference already but even then it's 20 percent faster on average and 19 percent faster on the one percent lows just with a little bit of overclocking now this does require 552 watts so it's a lot of power in fact i was seeing some pretty high junction temperatures on the gpu so i went ahead and applied some lit liquid metal and it dropped the temperatures significantly. I was looking at around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius lower temperatures on the hot spot, which did allow for even higher overclocks. But how close does it actually get to the RTX 4090? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look because you're going to be shocked. The first game here, Modern Warfare 2, you can already see it's actually ahead of the RTX 4090. Now, this was done at 4K with extreme settings and on average, yeah, it's around 9% faster than the 4090. But moving on to another game, Lies of P here at 4K using the best quality. Here's an example where the RTX 4090 at times definitely still can be faster. It is actually around... 15% faster on average, but the 1% lows were 26% faster. So it's definitely going to depend on the games you play. But moving on to another game, Fortnite DirectX 12 4K Epic with Nanite Off. And here actually, while the RTX 4090 was 25% faster on average, and I know that sounds bad, Actually, on the 1% lows, which are going to be more indicative to how smooth the game feels, the XTX was actually 5% ahead. But moving on next to Cyberpunk 2077, and here at 4K Ultra settings, surprisingly, they're pretty much the same, and actually, the XTX has far, far better 0.1% lows. Then moving on to the final game, Starfield 4K Ultra with VRS off, and here actually, the XTX is 19% faster on average than the 4090, and 25 five percent ahead on the one percent lows but what about the average where does it stack up in here 
I think you guys are going to be shocked because they're basically identical. The RTX 4090 is a tiny bit ahead when it comes to the average frame rate at around 5%. They're identical when it comes to the 1% lows, but actually on the 0.1% lows, the XTX is 6% ahead. Overall, I'd say they're basically identical cards, and all this is really is a 7900 XTX running at up to 3.3 gigahertz with a 22 gigabits per second memory overclock versus the, well, 20 gigabits per second on the regular XTX, as well as 2.5 gigahertz on a reference XTX in terms of the core clock speed. So honestly, this is why I'm calling it the unofficial 7970 XTX 3 gigahertz edition, because if they did really make one of these cards, I think it would basically be this. It might have slightly lower boost clocks than this overclock, but it would probably also come with Samsung's newer 24 gigabits per second GDDR6, which in my testing, actually the memory has more of an impact. So if they did make a GPU like this, which is effectively a fully unlocked XTX, it might actually even be a little bit faster than what I'm showing here now. So I wanted to bring you guys this video because I talk about a potential refresh for the ARC 7000 series a lot, and this is why. All it would take is some faster GDDR6 and a higher power target. They don't even have to release it on a new node, and these GPUs can get much much faster. It seems like they do scale fairly well, well over three gigahertz. Now, I do know at some point the scaling definitely starts to slow down. Maybe that is around 3.3 gigahertz. Maybe it's closer to 3.5 gigahertz. And maybe that's why they originally didn't want to make a GPU like this. But I think it would be kind of a missed opportunity if AMD didn't just release this as an air-cooled variant, again, with that faster memory. It would just be incredibly powerful. There's a lot of room left in the tank with these RDNA 3 cards. It's just a shame that AMD seems to be not allowing us to get the full potential out of them and locking the power targets down so heavily. Now, if you do want to purchase this card, I will have it linked in the description below. I think it's going for around $1,300, give or take 50 bucks. So it's definitely way cheaper than the 4090, but it is a lot more expensive than a lot of other XTX models, which probably a lot of those models can get at least a 15% overclock. So you could probably get somewhat close with a much cheaper variant. And that might be a better way to go if you don't want the absolute maximum performance. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that a 7970 XTX should actually exist? Or do you think that AMD was right in limiting the power and just aiming for an RTX 4080? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.